and welcome to Barbatos Catholic Podcast, the show where three Mexican dads talk about faith, life, and culture. We are your hosts, Gustavo, Ivan, and Walter. And today we are going to talk about the spirituality of Solanus Casey. But first, a word from our sponsor. How can you teach your children to live their Catholic faith beyond the walls of your parish? One way is to engage your family's values in a Catholic healthcare option like CMF Curo. CMF Curo is an affordable Catholic healthcare ministry that's perfect for growing families and that's rooted in church teachings. CMF Curo members share medical burdens in community, have access to a spiritual director, concierge services, health and spiritual resources, and more. Learn more about CMF Curo at MyCatholicHealthcare.com. That's MyCatholicHealthcare.com. ¿Qué tanto le estás moviendo? Pues hay para que se oiga un poquito. Sí, pero lo que pasa es que... Um, so voices. Me gusta oír tú. I, I like to hear the sound of your breathing, Walter. <laughs> Thank you. I am your father. Um, <laughs> speaking of being someone's father, I think I unlocked a dad accomplishment Badge. this week. Yeah. You know, if, if you're going to gamify <laughs> life. Um, Lucia has a double ear infection at the time of recording. And um, yeah, so she she's not been able to to keep food down, poor thing. And I was holding her, and she was feeling so crappy. And the only way that I could get her to um, calm down was to waltz with her around the the dining room, just uh, humming the um, uh, the, <laughs> the song from. Da, 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 As a father should. Yeah, because she's my princess, right? I love her. Um, but all of a sudden, she starts coughing and, and gagging. And all of, uh, it took longer for me to register what was happening than vomit falling on my T-shirt, you know, and, oh and uh, you know, pieces of pretzel and things <laughs> that she had had for dinner. And my my reaction, it, it was very weird because I'm like, I know that this is vomit. But I like cupped my hand and put it close to her mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's what I get. What and you I, do? And I leaned back a little bit so everything landed on my t-shirt. And I look at the end and I was like, nothing touched the floor. Yeah, mm. I was like with this triumph, dad of the year, <laughs> you know. And the the thing is, like, I've done this with all three of my kids. Yeah. So no, we'll see with Mateo. here's here's the plus of that. Uh huh. Obviously, you have puke all over yourself. But then there's only there's minimal cleanup because you just true. need to clean yourself up and yes. not yourself up and then have to like disinfect the whole floor essentially. Yes. Now, did you have to strategically take off your t-shirt so it wouldn't just fall on your face? Oh yeah. So it didn't, you know, I didn't smear it all over my beard. So not only did it not fall on the floor, you didn't get any on your precious beard. That is correct. Dude. Yeah. You're my hero. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I want to be like Walter when I grow That's up. That's awesome. And yeah. also like. Take some certain kind of skill. Pro tip, empty your um, kitchen sink every night. You never know if your kid's going to puke in their crib and then you're going to need to wash their hair mm -hmm. in the kitchen sink. It's just going to make your life easier and you're not going to be all like. Porque chicos platos en el lavabo. You know? I apologize for the idea. helicopter. I think they're looking for somebody. I know, Walter, so. your, your paper's in order, Walter? Yeah. I'm a legal alien. <laughs> the helicopter's getting awfully close here. I don't know. We're not in, like, the dicey part of town the, either. So. The other the other day, it, it, like, scared me, like, pretty bad because I was, like, doing my, like, nightly routine, my night prayer, and... All of a sudden, I just hear like a loud helicopter, even louder than this. Um, and it was literally on, on top of our house, almost. Well, it was yeah, circling but... on top of our house. They were looking for somebody, like the spotlight passed through our yard. And the girls <laughs> just like 
run from the room saying, is like, what's going on? This is awesome I'm like, you're like i ain't going back to jail <laughs> <laughs> i can't do this anymore i, can't I was do this with again. you from three to six <laughs> i can't do this again um it's crazy and yeah they were looking for somebody like in the in the school that's behind their house and they were there for a good 10 minutes Dang. only Oof. it got them because then the we started hearing the sound just fading away but anyway that's if you heard it that was a pretty noisy helicopter above us Sorry about that. We don't have any control over that. But what we do have control over is what we are talking about today. <laughs> this guy in the segways, I saw. <laughs> Segway king. <laughs> Segway king over here. You are welcome. That's awesome. Uh, well, this is our season finale. Yeah. Let's start by, by Thank you setting for the stage. sticking with us for uh, this is episode 22. But you, you guys know, if you have been uh, listening, that uh, the patron saint of the podcast is Blessed Silence Casey. And uh, over time, we, we have uh, some of his relics, and we've been praying with him and um, having this, this friendship with, with Salinas. And just knowing about him has, um, has made it so that... Um, I started to get more into his spirituality and spirituality of Salinas Casey can be broken down into two principles. The first one, religion is the science of our happy relationship with God and our neighbor. So let's break it down because there's a few things to, to unpack um, about this first principle. So, it says in, in in the book when I was reading it that what Solanus meant by religion back then in the 1940s, 1950s, um, today it would be considered um, faith or spirituality, what people would call it right now. Um, and uh, spirituality is the experience and expression of the nature and activity of a supreme reality. And it just so happens that for Solanus, it's kind of obvious, but the supreme reality was God. So that's why for him, it, it was, he was so sure about this reality because, you know, that's what he lived every single day and he dedicated his life to God. So for him, it was insanity to think that other people didn't believe in God because for him, that was it, you know, mm -hmm. the supreme reality was he accepted God. Um, and if we go from the principle that uh, theology is faith seeking understanding and understanding relates to reason and rationality, uh, this were the things that Solanus considered in the realm of science. That's why he calls it the, the mm -hmm. science of our happy relationship with God and neighbor. Um, so. All these, uh, the personal happiness that he had, because he was such a joyful man, right, begins with acceptance of oneself in a way that includes others. And I thought that this was very interesting, um, because the positive sense of himself was based in an awareness and sense of a call and, and purpose. And we have talked about how he spends so many hours just meeting with people where they were, you know, that, that story that you mentioned, Gustavo, about like the couple that went there when he was about to go you know, retire for the day and he stayed with them for like hours, hours, days, yeah. you know, just how selfless he was in, with his time and caring for, for others. That was his um his sense of purpose that he he possessed this this charity this joy this peace about him in the in a way that he would found he had found god deeply within himself and and others and everything in creation so for him it was like a a, a blending mm -hmm. of of god's life within mm -hmm. him um uh, which I think the Orthodox Church has that concept a little bit more delineated than the Roman Catholic Church, where it's like 
it's the uh, divinization of humanity. You know, it's kind of like the other way around. Like you, you become a, a divinized person. Um, and I, I, I don't, I'm not going to say which one is better than the other, you know, but, uh, in our case, in the in the Roman Catholic Church, it's more like okay, well, you become a, a saint. Mm-hmm. Um, we share in his divinity, right? Like mm-hmm. it, it, it's a it's a goal. Um, That's amazing to me, though, that God loves us that much, right? And and to be Solanus, oh my goodness, just he was there, dude. I think he experienced sainthood in life i don't know if that's a thing or not well right because he was just like like you said blended was a perfect word because he he just he was right there in every circumstance he found god in every aspect of life and every person that he met he wanted to live heaven on earth Mm -hmm. which you know sometimes it's used like a bumper sticker kind of a slogan that's like, oh, heaven on earth. But um, we can do that with the living of, uh, building of the kingdom and and starting that, like, um, yeah, let's just call it the blending of God's life with our life. Um, But but one thing that that Solanus um, mentions in his spirituality is that knowing God demands a, a threefold response. So, okay, we were talking about how we we can blend our lives with, with God's life in us. But that acknowledgement demands that we respond with appreciation, love, and service. And those are the three main things that, that Solanus was like big on. The way that... Um, that uh, his confidence in God gives rise to this gratitude. Like um, when when he would um, pray with people, he had this this I don't want to call it superhuman faith, but kind of, it's 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 it's, it's um, supernatural. Mm-hmm. Um, so when he prayed with others with this confidence in 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 God it is like i wish it, like i covet <laughs> having faith like that you know because um he even says that like if god condescends to use our powers if we don't spoil his plans by ours you mm-hmm. know <laughs> no. uh, but but at the same time uh, you know, when we get the things that we want, that's that's wonderful. But when we get the the suffering, um, Solanus even has like a response to that, is saying, in the crosses of life that come to us, uh, Jesus offers opportunities to help him redeem the world, and it's kind of like this this balance of like the good and the not so good. Because sometimes when you're like, okay, prayers answered. It's like, I I want to land that job or, you know, my kids uh, recovering uh, their health or um, mm-hmm. those kinds of prayers are important things to, to pray for, those kinds of things. Uh, but if the answer to the prayer is, Yes, I mean it could be yes, no, or not right now, mm-hmm. <laughs> because there's something there that that needs to be uh, learned by us by that experience. Um, recognizing the response from God to our prayer is uh, what am I trying to say? That recognizing what what God wants from us. Um, the fact that we can have opportunities to help Jesus redeem the world with our suffering is like, well, don't let it go to waste. Oh yeah, I mean, you just find meaning in that, in that suffering, suffering in that trial and tribulation. 
because otherwise, I mean, that's why there's so much suicide. Hmm. Because people just get like into their own head and they can't get out of their own head and they, they just don't find that answer, the yes response that they require to get out of that problem. And sadly, they don't find any other solution or any other um, way to offer it. You know, we do because we have the best example of 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 uh, sacrificial love every time you look at a cross. You know, that's the, the ultimate gift. And whatever we can do in, and again, it goes back to even, so God shares in that divinity, but he also allows us to share in that suffering uh, to some extent. Um, yeah, I think that, that allows mm-hmm. is like the key because think about abortion and euthanasia, right? When uh, uh, Jérôme Lejeune, uh, the French geneticist, discovered the uh, Down syndrome um, chromosome, the like the abnormality, the the medical community was like, well, now we can abort those babies because you know they're, mm-hmm. they're defective, and we're mm-hmm. saving them from their suffering. Or you know, when someone is really ill. And, in the terminal phase, it's like, well, which is mercy kill them, mm-hmm. you know, which is the world that we live in. And in that opportunity for suffering, that that suffering can save souls, um, you know, even if it is something as um, tragic as a life that is it, going to be full of, of suffering. I think that the that we don't like to suffer. It's not pleasant, obviously, mm-hmm. to go through it when you're going through it, but the fact of, of wasting the suffering to me is like especially because I won't I don't I don't I don't like wasting things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like to use the most out of everything is I don't mm-hmm. know, that, that that's just part of my personality, but uh, I thought of uh, and I, I redemptive suffering is is just kind of mind blowing to me. It's one of the first things that I talked to Deanna when we were dating, and just like the fact of like the Mother Teresa's of the world and the Mother Angelica, who was like sad that she got better with her health because she's like, well, now I don't have anything to offer Jesus, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um. Solana has also said that the setting limits on God is a sign of weak faith, which that one sting, mm-hmm. you know, when you're like, well, you know, um, this is probably beyond, um, like we don't expect miracles. Correct. I think, uh, because like, oh, I want like this lofty thing that I'm dreaming about. It's like, no, it's not going to happen. You know, it's not for me. But you don't know. Mm -hmm. Have faith. And if it is for the part of God's plan, it will will come for you. Um, That's why I think a part of the of the aspect, not, not part of the aspect, part of the um, it's the ask. Mm-hmm. Part of receiving is asking. You know, we we usually typically ask somebody for something that we need. That's something that we don't have. So, coming back to your comment of saying sometimes we like maybe underestimate God and say no, or I don't want to like push that far. There's nothing's impossible to God. But it's the ask of, like the centurion, right? It was monumental what he was going to ask. And and thinking back to those days of Jesus, like miracles were, I don't want to say they were happening every day, but it was not uncommon because he went and asked for a miracle. Not, not Not a little thing. He didn't ask for five bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. He asked for 
his child to be saved. That's a tall order. Or for Lazarus. No one marries like, yeah. if you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. She knew that. Full heartedly knew that Jesus could, could prevent that. Um, and I think that's the faith Solanus had. He, he just knew he to the core. He knew. That's why I love that book. I the, the uh, ask uh, as got a, a thank God ahead of time, right? That's yeah. the name of the book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love that because you're like you said in one episode, it's like you're putting him on the spot, and there's nothing that he wouldn't give us if that's really what we need. Yeah, or that's the time that we needed him. So, I think that's the key. It's like if we need it, and if it is time for when we need it. Um, to touch on um, two other things that we just talked about, the uh, charity. So Lana says, and this is uh, this is kind of a, a, a tall order, but he says, be as blind to the faults of your neighbor as possible, trying at least to attribute a good intention to their actions. And I was like, okay. I can work with this uh, <laughs> because, you know, so many times you get in an argument with someone or someone does you wrong and immediately it's like, this person is the worst, you know, but you never know like what they're, what they're going through. And, uh, you know, if they, someone tells you a parenting uh, advice or something that was, on call for like why did this person think that i'm not a good parent it's like no maybe they had like a good intention to share some knowledge and they're already going mm -hmm. through it you don't know um but then uh gratitude to to like kind of like round up the uh the response to the threefold response to knowing god um he talks about how ingratitude leads to so many breaks with God and neighbor. And I thought about this part as, um, you know, how Eucharist is uh, Thanksgiving in Greek, I believe. Um, so the more that we practice um, Thanksgiving and, and gratitude, because everything is gift. God is the giver of life. We are here because he willed us into existence. And we all have our talents and uh, things that we do. And, and they are all gift. If, if we have our intelligence and our voices, if you are a singer or your abilities in um, woodworking or you make the best tacos in the valley, Um, you know, those are gifts from God. Um, and we need to be thankful for all of those things, whether they're, they're, they're good or, or bad, you know? Um, and how was Solanus to a T of how, um, he saw everything in the light of, of God, um, in, in saying Deo gratias, that that's what he would say constantly it was always on his lips um which kind of uh leads us into the second principle of solana's spirituality he says that religion is the science of our providential dependence on god and our neighbor so the first one was our happy relationship and the second one would be our providential dependence So why, why dependence? So Solanus practiced this um, passive abandonment or trust in God's will uh, at all times. And, and, and there are like two sub points to that mm -hmm. particular one. There's one's a passive abandonment and active abandonment. So how do each one of these look like? Um, On the passive side of it, um, Solanus experienced God 
as a God that wills to bring order from disorder, healing from pain, abundance from poverty, and loving union from sinful alienation. Um, so for him, he saw the things that were happening in, happening in the world and how they can all be redeemed through him. Um, all the things that were happening when he lived through World War II, um, which... Did you know that the the atomic bomb was dropped on the feast day of the Transfiguration? Mm. It's kind of scary to think about, mm. kind of like the mushroom cloud with like the glory of God, but yeah. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it, anyway, it's just um, this is more like from. Uh, from God towards us. He has, uh, I have a few co quotes from him where he talks about. Uh, from God? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> That's a good, I know, I was talking about, yes. Thank you for checking. <laughs> from Salanis. Okay, got it. Salanis says, one of humanity's greatest weakness is setting a limit on God's power and goodness. Uh, and kind of goes with like what we were talking about or how like, you know, lack of, of faith in God can lead to, to those breaks. Um, he also says that fostering confidence, we greatly eliminate the danger of sadness that frustrates God's merciful designs. And this made me think a lot of St. Therese of Lisieux um, on how Therese is very like, I'm the I'm the little flower of of God, and how He sends the rain and uh, you know tills the soil for um, her to to flourish in in her faith and in in a way like us too um, when when we have that um, temptation to to be sad um, about what we have. Because we're like thinking about the things, we're focusing too much on the things that we don't have, that we don't have time to be grateful for the things we do have. And you make an exercise of, um, and maybe that is something that, for those of you who are listening today, before you go to bed, during your prayer time, start thinking about all of those things that you are thankful for, things that you give for granted. Um, you know, having both of your arms and hands, being able to walk by yourself, that you have food in your fridge and probably your deep freezer, <laughs> you know, that, uh, you know, that uh, you have a roof over your head, clothing, all yeah. these, we, we can, you know, it, it might sound silly, but it is not, <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it's because I, I, I think that Salinas was like a very down to earth, I think, um, in his spirituality and his confidence in, in God. Um, he also said, how merciful the good God is, always fitting the back for the burden, if not vice versa as often is the case. That is like, okay, God's not going to send you more than you can handle. He's going to send enough vomit from your toddler that you can catch it on your t-shirt. <laughs> or, um, I don't know. Yeah, we, here I think back to, I mean, how, how do people without faith or, what do they do? Uh, I'm, that's Who a, do you turn to? Exactly. When when you are the master of your universe, and you, you fail, decided it like that. Obviously, family members and stuff like that, but that they can only take you so far. Um, well, I think that they turn to whatever idols they have built, correct. right? Yeah, their That's gods, like, right? The, yeah, so it's going to give you the the fix for comfort. Yeah, the pleasure. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, it's kind of sad to think, but it is. And I pray for the for those people because 
God has a plan for them too. You know what I mean? Um, it's I love that quote. How merciful the God, the good God is, always fitting the back for the burden. It's like he he kind of like builds you up. And and our faith is a faith of sacrifice. Yeah, you know that's how it was made. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, we got soft. Sacrifice. We, we got soft, soft, right? Like, yeah. I don't I, know how it's going to be in the in the near future, but you know, if, like the church grew in the first century because it was being persecuted. We have it very easy. Like, we can yeah. go to mass. Well, yeah, you know, no. Problem. I think there's others, uh, other forms of suffering, though. Like for oh, me. Of course. Coming back to the kids, right, and, and and obviously you guys can relate. It's like I've never been as afraid as I am as a dad. Yeah, you know. I mean, have you guys gotten those instances where they f- get like a really bad, bad fall, or it just takes your breath away, and that's this tiny person that just takes over you. Oh, and you seem like covered in blood or puke or or like a hundred and three fever. That's that's fear. That's real sacrifice, right there. That you, you know, that you, you know, you want to will the good of your children. And I don't know, man. I mean, sometimes I think that Solana's had it good, you know, because maybe he he wasn't um, exposed to that part of life. He 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 suffered in his way. He carried a lot. Uh, because of his ailments and his skin condition and stuff like that. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming that was like completely devastating and painful for him. Um, but in a way, he was accompanying the people that was correct. going to St. But he carried so much. You know, I mean, yeah. we carry our kids and, and, and their suffering, and we help them through that and grow through that. But he encountered hundreds of people. I deal with the same issues on a day-to-day basis. Like, right. okay, I, I had a cereal. You'll live. <laughs> You know, quién se acabó los choco crispies? Oh no, I want cereal. Anyway, <laughs> um, so last thing before we move on to active abandonment, memory helps develop gratitude. So we become aware of how God has acted in our lives. That's going to help. So um, go to uh, our feed and. I don't remember the number of the episode, but uh, creating a, a Catholic memories. catalog of memories mm-hmm. um, will help on that one. Um, it's in there towards the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in there. There's only 22, 23 episodes. Yeah, You'll find it. it. Yeah. Um, okay, let's, let's move on to the active abandonment uh, part. And here... Um, I find this interesting because and I, I I feel like I always say interesting. I was listening to the St. Joseph episode the other day and I was like, I always find things interesting. That's good. <laughs> you get a, like, need to live in awe, you know? You're a right. curious person. Cheers, George. I like curiosity, Walter. Thank you. Thank you for lifting me up. You, you guys are the best. <laughs> The the active abandonment part would be the willingness to be co-creators with God in history, in the way or ways that we allow God to act in us, act asking confidently and thankfully. So that is was in awe that God was uh, providentially dependent on him. Like, yeah, just like. God was using Solanus as an instrument to bring his grace um, to um, to the people that he was ministering to. Um, you know, the, there's um, there's a documentary about Blessed Solanus Casey informed, if you have access to it, where um, they were making like um, an interesting remark about how in the Bible you have all these accounts of miracles that have happened, but um, they're mentioning how in in this uh, uh, friary in Detroit, there has been all these miracles 
that it's like a continuation mm -hmm. of the miracles that, that Jesus uh, did in his three years of public ministry when he was uh, walking on the earth, which is kind of mind-blowing to think. Like, it, even they go uh, as far as to say that maybe there has been more miracles happening in Bonaventure than in uh, in Lourdes, you know, mm. in, in the waters of Lourdes. And I'm like, that's bold. <laughs> I don't I don't know the numbers, but I know that a lot of people go. You think the saints have like that competition in heaven? Can you like imagine the, if they I have had, a leaderboard? I, I have like 453 as of this morning. <laughs> Take that, St. Bernadette. You know, like they just go through that. <laughs> that's funny. It's like a final four bracket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. That's that is funny. I understood that March Madness. You're learning. Yeah. Go sports. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, I, you probably know by now that out of the three of us, I'm the the one that doesn't care about sports at all. Um, but uh, that would be hilarious if we get to heaven and did you did you did you watch Ready Player One? Mm -mm. They have like the leaderboard, of, like <laughs> how they are unlocking the uh, the keys, whatever. To it's you watch the movie. It's 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 a palomera. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyways, it's like the beatific vision. But you're still you're not competing. You're like in the presence of God. <laughs> who cares? Or maybe you do. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, God depends on all creatures to be who and what they are created to be to fulfill their part in God's original plan. This is very humbling to think that we, we three, everyone that's listening, um, we all have a role to play in the drama of salvation. And God wants to come in into our mess Of, of life and and use that to bring about his his mission of, of saving everybody because he wants everybody to be saved um so let's just have this active abandonment of saying yes lord um let us be an instrument just it's, it's this, exactly the same reason why we started this, this podcast in hopes that it it helps you who are listening to to grow to be um motivated to go deeper in this relationship with God in your walk of faith um Solanus says that the secret um well not, not really Solanus but in the book they make um a uh kind of like a similarity with uh, the the book the secret that came out in like the early 2000s you remember that this is like ask the universe and it will come to you mm -hmm. um but Solanus is confident asking uh, it was based in the gospel right like one ask god two with confidence and three become open to to what you ask for um And like the secularized version of it is the secret. Like you need to ask with this um, certainty that you're going to get what you ask the universe, which we know that it is asking with confidence, asking God with confidence. And another aspect of this is that we need to understand that we are mutually dependent on one another um responding to our needs like god has done for us we need to become images of god um and so that says that peace is an outstanding characteristic of charity um just maybe this is just my phlegmatic temperament coming out in this but like keeping the peace has been one of the things that I try to to strive for um mainly because I I don't like 
confrontation well I, no i don't mind confrontation but it's like when when things are like i like to air things out like you know mm. if there's something that's happening yeah you'll come out and say it yeah eventually you know yeah. i might yeah, stew on good. it for a little bit and be like you know what was this about mm -hmm. um i guess ivan has been on the receiving end of that during exodus 90 when we haven't checked in for our it's true <laughs> or our uh, what did you do did you pray <laughs> um, but it's because I care how much how much did you pray 20 Tell minutes me. don't Tell lie me. to me it's a sin <laughs> so legalist next time record yourself <laughs> and send me the file exactly <laughs> can you admit? no we're not gonna do that he's like getting ideas never mind Uh, okay, few uh, more points before we wrap it up. Um, the book talks about a, a need for a continual and ongoing conversion. Um, it is a lifelong process. And, I mean, it ends in death. We all know that we're not here forever. Um, Salinas talks about earth as the best view, the best view of heaven which I, I think that it is a, a very appropriate uh, way to, to name it because, you know, you can think of, um, you know, our existence here on Earth as a pilgrimage. So this is basically our ship where, where we are going. But this is just like the vestibule of it. We're like almost there, but we can start living as if we were in heaven already here. Um, so we don't have to wait until then. And this, there's this concept of um, metanoia, which is like the constant conversion um, that is needed. So we we grow in that relationship, in that like blending of, of our lives with the life of God. Heaven for Solanus is where love of God and neighbor is the life and the very soul of society and association where hopeful faith has merged into eternal charity. Hopeful faith merges into eternal charity. Um, and it just wraps up everything with a bow, <laughs> I think, of all of the things that, that define his, his spirituality and, and how much more for us could help us to get us through those times when we need of God the most. Um, when we're going through a rough patch and, and we ask God with faith to get us through um, whatever we are um, experiencing. It's, it's an active abandonment. We are trusting. But also that doesn't mean that we just sit down and wait for everything to fall on our lap from 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 the sky. There there is certain action that needs to happen. The the prayer itself is it's it's, it's an active thing. Um and even in his deathbed, he was offering his suffering for for all to become one. Like that was like his thing. He was um uh, He was very concerned with the oneness of of Christians. He he won. He was upset, I guess, that he wouldn't see it in his lifetime. Um, and the last thing that he said it was, "I give my soul to Jesus Christ," and then he passed. Um, so just to to some. All of this in one sentence is, he was talking about how Salinas was a mystic in action. It's like this very deep experience of God in one's life. But he was also like in the weeds with the people. Um, and I think that that combination, it is like perfect for our times 
that we are living in because um, that experience of God can be what attracts other people to to what we have if we mm -hmm. exude that, if we are grateful, if we are thankful, if we are charitable to others, just like Solanus was. Um, having those kind of attributes will be like uh, the honey that we'll uh, bring. So, no, that's... Yeah, I mean, that's spirituality like. is how we experience God and how we show it. And I think Solanus was a vibrant example of that. Um, the fact that he was, I don't know, I kind of figure him a little bit as St. Benedict to a degree. Mm -hmm. Because I think he maybe just wanted to be alone with God. But God was like, no, you're going to be alone with me with this couple, and with this mom and five kids, and with this bishop that I'm sending you for. Because he was just like, It, with the people. And that abandonment wasn't passive. It was active. Because it was like, okay, God, I am going to minister to these people with you. And it was like an, it's a, an active relationship. Um, and I don't know, harking back to when we started this whole thing, I was just looking at, at that photo that we made the logo out of. And that was, that was what really attracted me to Solanus, to be honest. I love Maximilian Colby and I love Padre Pio, which were both in the running. But when we settled on Solanus, it was his, it was his, it was his look that I you just saw Jesus in his eyes. Mm -hmm. you, you don't in the other two, you know what I mean? Padre Pio, come on. Or Maximilian Colby is like sacrifice. Crazy. I don't know. There was like this glimmer in his eye that it was just yes. This this feels right. It's like uh, someone you can just go get a beer with, with exactly. You know exactly. Mm. Blessed Solanus Casey, a saint for our days. Yeah, and he's <laughs> gonna be canonized, and that that'll be a joyous day for a lot of people, not just for us because he's our patron patron saint of this. Uh, Podcast. podcast, but how how many more people will he inspire after he's a, a canonized? Because more people will become aware of him. That's true. You know, right now he's just, I still feel that he's flying under the radar. There's a very select group of people that know about Solanas and obviously in Detroit and in the Solanas Casey Center. So we're yeah. actually hipsters. Yeah, we're hipsters in that sense. <laughs> I don't like saying that word, but um, I love it. I think Solanus is going to be one of the greats. In his simplicity, he's going to be just like a rock star. Yeah. Can't wait to meet him. Nice. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, and so, with that, I think we, we, we can start wrapping up. And thank you, all of you who are listening. Um, this is the last episode of season one. We we want to thank you all for for listening to us talking ad nauseum about if quesadillas have <laughs> cheese or not in them, and other uh, things about Mexican culture, uh, faith, and life. Um, thank you, thank you so much because we really are doing this for for you who are listening and the fact that we have had a very positive response from you, it, it really motivates us to, to keep going and, and to keep uh, putting out this, this content um, because you guys are listening. So, and we're all in it together, you know, reach out. We would love to hear what you guys would like us to touch upon on this podcast. This is your podcast as well. We, we get enriched by it. We learn and read and try to prepare as much as possible so we don't sound nonsensical and all uh, to an extent. like that on every single episode. But yeah, we want to make it a conversation. You know, we're a community. We're, we're all in this together. It's a big boat. Um, and we love just passing that on, passing the baton and 
and keeping keeping the conversation going. So don't be bashful. Amen. Iron, what would you say to our audience as we wrap season one? Mm, thank you for joining us on this journey. It's it's been a lot of fun to do, and it's been a lot of fun to just sit here and have conversations about faith, about life, mm-hmm. about our families, about especially about Solana's Casey. Um, it's very easy to be discouraged in your faith. It's very easy to to you know to think about. Well, you know, like nothing crazy has happened in my life or, you know, I don't have like this crazy testimony or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of easy to think that, like, what do I have to offer? What do I have to offer? Like, what makes me special, you know? Um, but everybody has a role. Um, so, like, especially on this podcast, you know, <clears throat> what all three of us bring to the to this podcast, like, it's. We just want to encourage everyone to to just live their faith as best as they can. Um, I think mean, the whole time we're talking about this, this um, the spirituality of Salon is, is I think I find myself more on the spectrum of being dependent on God. Um, and there's a there's a song right now called by well it's it's been out for a while maybe like a few months but have you guys heard of Maverick City Music? No, mm-hmm. it's praise and worship band. They're really, really good. There's this one song called You Hold It All Together, and the bridge for the song, it's um, what does he say? He says, you're, you are the alpha and you're omega. You're in the middle, and then you hold it all together. So when I break that down in my head, it's very overwhelming to think that like, <laughs> like God's the omega. He's the alpha. He's the omega. Like he's at the very beginning before, like right now at this very mm-hmm. moment, he's, he's there right now, but he's at the end of our life right now, mm-hmm. but he's still in the middle right now. And to me, it's so crazy to think that whatever small part that I have to play that I think it might not be super significant the fact that the Lord still calls me, um, the fact that the Lord calls Solanas, even right now, is crazy to think about. That, yeah, it's just, it's it's something that, so when we were just talking about all this, I, I just kept thinking of, of that song, like I was just replaying that song in my head. <laughs> that like, yeah, you're the alpha, you're the mega, you're in the middle, but you're you're holding everything. All these three things, everything, you're holding it all together. Mm-hmm. And you're the only person that can do that. That's deep. Mm-hmm. I think we should leave it there. It's a good it's a good way to wrap up a season. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the season finale of Barbados Catholic Podcast, the show where three Mexican dads talk about faith, life, and culture. If you like the show, please consider subscribing to the podcast, sharing it on social media, leaving a rate and review on Apple Podcasts, and recommending it to your friends and family. And if you didn't like it, well, just keep it to yourself and let others make their own mistakes. You can follow us on Instagram at Barbatos Catholic Podcast. You can send us an email at hello at barbatoscatholicpodcast.com. On the web, we are at www.barbatoscatholicpodcast.com where you'll find the show notes for this episode and more. And um, stay tuned on Instagram. We'll um, uh, publish our plans for uh, when we are releasing uh, the episodes for season two. We might take uh, um, some time off to just recharge. It's getting really warm in my garage. So we might have to skip recording in the summer or find somewhere else to Mm -hmm. do that. But um, we'll, we'll keep you posted. And like Gustavo said, if you have ideas for what you want to listen in episode two of our Baptist Catholic podcast, hit us up, let us know, and we will be more than happy to consider any topics that um, might be of interest for, for our listeners. And as always, blessed Salinas Casey. Pray for us. Until the next season. <laughs>